Today, I'm gonna show you an easy way to install missing drivers or to update existing drivers in Windows. Stay tuned. This week's sponsor is me. If you'd like to support this channel, the best way is to pick up a t-shirt at cybercputech.com. All my t-shirts are extremely high quality and durable. These are the same shirts I wear in videos. So if you like the shirt I'm wearing, then head over to cybercputech.com and pick yourself up one today. I wish I knew about this years ago. Modern versions of Windows do a pretty good job of keeping your drivers up to date. In fact, the days of doing a fresh install of Windows and having almost no drivers installed is pretty much over. Microsoft has done an amazing job of making most hardware work right out of the box. However, this isn't always perfect. It relies on driver signing. So if there's not a signed driver for a specific piece of hardware, it simply won't be available through Windows Update. Also, a lot of obscure hardware devices sometimes still don't install because Microsoft simply doesn't have the driver available for that device. And let's not forget that Windows Update doesn't always have the latest driver for your specific piece of hardware. In fact, I almost guarantee you it won't. The device may function with the driver Windows installed, but that driver may be an older outdated version that has since had performance improvements or bug fixes added to it. Now don't get me wrong, I don't fault Microsoft at all for any of these issues. They deserve credit where credit is due. Installing Windows 10 or 11 today is way different than it used to be with Windows XP. Those were the days when a fresh install almost never had any network drivers. Definitely no video drivers. And in most cases, the audio didn't even work. They gave you just enough for the system to run, and then it was on you to go out and find drivers for your specific hardware. Now, in the past, we used to search Google for a device hardware ID to find a driver. Unfortunately, scammers have figured this out and have inundated Google search results with crappy malware programs and completely BS hardware driver databases. You might be able to identify your device through Google, but the chances of finding a usable updated driver are typically very difficult. This is unfortunate because it used to be really easy to find drivers using hardware IDs. You would just go into Device Manager, right click on the missing device and click Properties, go over to the Details tab and select Hardware ID from the drop down menu, then right click on the Hardware ID and hit Copy. You would then search Google for the Hardware ID and typically find the driver. Unfortunately, now you find a lot of junk. Programs that promise to keep all of your drivers up to date that are actually nothing more than malware. In fact, that's exactly what I thought when someone in the comments of a previous video recommended the program we're looking at today. I just assumed it was another piece of malware that made grand promises of updating your drivers but didn't really deliver. Boy was I wrong. Today, we're looking at a program called Snappy Driver Installer. This is an open source tool that has absolutely no advertising and does exactly what it says it does. It installs updated drivers. The way it works is by using its own driver database. It will first download an index file that uses hardware IDs to identify the driver you have in your system. It then compares the version that you're currently using with the latest version available of that driver in their own driver database. Then at this point, it gives you the option to update your drivers to the latest versions. The way it accesses these drivers is through using the BitTorrent file protocol. So you're actually downloading these drivers from people who have already downloaded them in the past. The way you use Snappy Driver Installer is by either downloading the installer and just installing it on your computer, or downloading a portable version and keeping it on a USB drive. I personally do the later because I don't like having a bunch of extra programs that take up resources on my system when I'm not using them. Also, as a technician, it's nice to have a tool that I can use to plug into any system's USB drive. 
Just a warning though, you definitely don't want to use a small capacity USB drive for this program. I currently use a 64 gig drive and it's simply not big enough. I will probably end up going with a 120 gig drive at some point, but for now, the 64 gig works pretty good. This is because if you want to download the entire driver database, it takes a huge amount of space. Just the initial install is like 30 gigs. Then every time you update, you end up using even more space. So I would recommend using the biggest thumb drive you can throw at it. Now, let's take this USB drive and plug it into my computer and I'll show you how to use the program. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and open up a browser window and go to sdi-tool.org. This is the website for Snappy Driver Installer. And then once you get there, go ahead and click on the download link and it'll give you the option to either download the full version or the light version. Now the full version is just that, it's a full version, it has everything and it's 25.6 gigabytes and you have to download this as a torrent but if you want you can download the light version which essentially just doesn't come with any of the driver packs and that one's five gigs and it's a direct download you can download from here so once you have it all downloaded go ahead and extract it to a folder on your system at this point you can move all of this to a thumb drive if you want but I'm using one that's copied to the system right here just for demonstration purposes. So you'll have these executables inside of the root directory. You'll have essentially the SDIO underscore, and then this is gonna correspond with the version of the Snappy Driver installer that you downloaded. And you're gonna wanna pick the 64-bit version if you're running a 64-bit operating system. And once you run that, go ahead and say yes, and you should get the program. And what the program's gonna do is it's going to look at all of the drivers that you currently have installed, and it's gonna compare those to what it has available. And if it doesn't give you anything, you may have to come up here and click update. And by clicking update, it really depends on what you're trying to do at the time. You can just do updates for the specific PC that you're working on, and by doing that, it will only download the specific driver packs that correspond with your computer. Or you can hit check all and it'll download everything. But as you can see, it's gonna take a lot of space in order to do that. So I would recommend just doing this PC only if you plan on just using it on your specific computer. If you plan on using this on a thumb drive or you have multiple computers that you wanna use this on, then it's a good idea to download everything because then you'll have it available to you when you need it. So let's move on. All right, once you have the program updated, you can go ahead and close this window here. And essentially what you're left with is, as you can see, there's several drivers right here that haven't been updated. And the way this program works is you go ahead and click on select all. It will select all the drivers that are available for you. And then you click on install. Yep. That's pretty much what it does is it just does exactly what it says it does. It installs drivers or updates existing drivers. So once you get all of your drivers installed, you should be left with this page right here. Certain drivers are gonna require the system to be restarted, and in order to restart it, you just restart it like you normally would. You can go ahead and click right here, and what this will do is it will hide all the drivers that it's already installed. And as you can see now, I have nothing left to update, and I can go ahead and restart the system. So as you can see, this program is really easy to use. You just run the executable, the program automatically detects all of the outdated or missing drivers on your system, and then gives you the opportunity to install them or update them. No pop-ups, no claims that you can't do certain things without the premium version, no malware, and absolutely no BS. It just does exactly what it says it does installs drivers. And considering that this is an open source project, it does a pretty good job of it too. However, I have had a couple of issues with it. My biggest issue is with this tool using the BitTorrent file protocol. While it works great, it's not always the fastest. In fact, when I wanna update all the available drivers in the entire database, it typically has to leave the USB in a drive overnight in order for it to update. Also, there's been a few instances where a driver for a system isn't available and it needs to download it, and the amount of time that it takes to download is annoyingly slow. Typically, when that happens, I'm really busy and I just wanna get the system off my bench so I can get to another one. However, 
I understand why they use the BitTorrent protocol to make this tool work. Because if they hosted the driver database themselves, it would be incredibly expensive and it would be virtually impossible to provide this tool for free. So since I'm not paying for the tool, I'm not gonna complain when it's slow downloading updates. The next issue that I've had is just problems associated with updating drivers. I have yet to see an instance where it couldn't find a driver for a specific piece of hardware, but you know, that might happen. However, I have had one instance when I let it update all the drivers on the system and it left the system unbootable. In that case, it was the SATA driver that updated and after a reboot, the system simply started blue screening because it couldn't find its boot drive. But this really wasn't hard to fix. There's a cool little trick where you force the system to boot into safe mode, and then once it fully boots, just reboot the system into normal mode, and it will typically find its boot drive on the new driver and just boot normally from that point forward. In this case, that's all I had to do. But there is a possibility you could run into problems using this tool. While it's always a good idea to keep your drivers updated to the latest versions, there have been instances in the past where a bug in the latest driver can wreak havoc on your system. Normally, this can easily be fixed by simply rolling back the driver you just updated. But if you used a tool like this to update all of your drivers, you may not even know which driver it was that caused the problem. So keep that in mind if you decide to use this tool. But if you do, the tool also has an option to create a restore point before it updates drivers. So that could come in handy in those cases. And you know, another thing that I recommend is not using this tool to update update your GPU drivers. I would highly recommend using the NVIDIA or ATI driver install to get the latest driver for your GPU. In fact, if you have an NVIDIA card, check out this video where I show you the easiest way to not only install your NVIDIA drivers, but to customize the installer to fit your needs. Have a great day.